Hey guys, Alan from Stillwell Performance here with another installment of our video series. Today we're talking about the very sweet 2017 KTM XCW line. We've spent a lot of time testing with this bike and uh, have some great information for you on just what we see as the advantages and disadvantages of the suspension on the 17Ws. Um, interestingly enough, KTM went on a really uh, weight saving diet with the suspension components. Specifically when you look at the shock, they, uh, they took the overall uh, diameter of the shock body down and uh, as well as the piston and the main, uh, uh, main shaft assembly. So a little bit different setup there. Um, not really too happy with that as there's less oil. Less oil creates more heat along with what we're going to talk about on the, uh, on the stock reservoir system. We've uh, we found that this shock does create some ex excessive heat, and we have a couple solutions for that that I'll tell you about in a second. But taking this thing down, they've gone away from the old style PDS bottoming needle and gone to a system that is very much like the Fox RC3 bottoming cone system, where you actually have a secondary piston at the end of the shock shaft that will bottom itself out into the bottom of the shock. And while that's a good system, I wished KTM would have went the extra step and put an adjustable uh, bottom out control on it similar to the Fox. Don't know if there's a patent involved in that, but looking at that from the outside in, it would have been a nice add for KTM to do. Specifically, when we, when we rode this bike, we've been on it uh, quite a bit. We actually got an early release model out of Australia from our Australia shop brought the suspension up, brought the bike up, and have been doing a lot of testing on it. Uh, the rocks, the mountains, sand, pretty much, we even motored this thing. So, gone through a lot of different stages in our development, and we elected to wait to bring this video out until we had a good solid solution that we felt was a huge improvement and uh, very cost effective as well. So, specifically, <clears throat> what we found on the shock is that the shock has, like typical KTM stuff, or excuse me, WP stuff, has a lot of flow issues. Uh, the piston's somewhat restrictive, and with just less oil volume going back and forth, we also notice that the shock heats up a lot faster. So, taking a look at the reservoir, one of the culprits in there is the reservoir stock piston. Essentially, your reservoir on your shock is about 90% filled with nitrogen and this piston floats up and down to displace the oil volume as you hit bumps and, and move the shock through its stroke. So specifically what we found is that the reservoir piston heats up at a different ratio than the actual reservoir can and creates a lot of stiction in there. Um, the other obvious one is we like to run as, just as much oil as we can in that shock to give us a cooler and smoother running shock. So we are, uh, we are just about to release our bladder kit for this shock. We're pretty excited about it because it takes all the good things that a bladder does, which is more oil flow, cooler running, but specifically for the ride quality, it actually helps with the low speed bump absorption. As you can think, getting this sticky piston to move in here rather than a rubber ball starting to squeeze as soon as you hit a bump, one of them works a lot better than the other. So something we found pretty consistent. We've had good performance with, uh, with our bladder kit, so you'll see one of those from us. The other thing that we're working on right now is our pro valve pistons. Uh, we've seen that we can improve the flow to the piston and get some different dampening characteristics, so look for that coming out pretty quick here as well. So overall, our solution to this shock is pretty straightforward. We, uh, we don't believe it needs a lot of extra work. I think that the, uh, uh, the characteristics of the PDS remain the same. The shock does tend to unload easier than we like to see under braking. And we also believe that with our, uh, with our upgrades, you'll get much better bump compliance and hold up at the end of the stroke. We, uh, on our progressive rate springs, we do run uh, much more progressive of a spring than what comes on the KTMs. And I think that you'll find that with the combination of everything we just described here, you'll get, uh, you'll get a really good plush ride. You can take a look at our website and see our four different uh, valving packages. And what I just described to you here is, uh, is along the lines of an intermediate kit. So we have four different options, starting from the Weekend Warrior kit to the intermediate to the Pro kit, and then lastly to our A kit. 
Uh, I know you've heard a lot about this. We've been putting this thing on the podium, winning a lot of national championships with this solution. Basically, what the A-Kit solution does is it takes everything that we've just explained to you here and installs it in a Kashima shock body. With the A-Kit, what you'll find is that you'll reduce the stiction inside of the shock quite a bit. It's an even better solution for this particular 17 model line because, as we said before, we're dealing with a smaller cavity, less oil, all the things that would create heat. One of the main advantages to the A-Kit, besides the cooling aspect, is it makes the shock incredibly smooth. If you can think about parts sliding together, they create stiction. Stiction creates harshness, and harshness gets transmitted to the rider. So we're a big fan of A-Kit. You can take a look at our website. We actually have that product line on sale right now. So very, uh, very trick looking, too, if you want to impress the buddies. So I'll go over this fork with you a little bit to give you an understanding of what's happening inside. There are some changes from the old style open cartridge fork, which is, this is pretty much a distant new cousin to that, but has a lot of the same problems. So the biggest difference in this fork is they've gone to different dampening controls for your compression and rebound. So by isolating the circuits, they've brought some other new things along with it. This is the new mid-valve system. Instead of the traditional spring and shim stack, they've actually gone with a ramped, we could call it a cone valve, not exactly, but it's pretty close to that. They've gone with a ramp type of, uh, of uh, adjuster here that is adjusted by the clicker on the top. This pretty much dictates oil flow through the fork. Open it up, flows more oil, close it off, flows less oil. Pretty harsh both ways, actually. So we took a look at that. We took a look at the overall oil flow. We took a look at the feeling and the feedback we get from our riders because we don't sit in front of a dyno. We go out to the trails. We go out to the track. I think it's one of the reasons we've been so successful with our racing careers. We really don't rely on machines to get our solutions. We're out there making it happen the same way that you are on the track or trail with the bikes. Um, what we found in this fork is that it tended to dive excessively. It is undersprung, but the problem goes further than that. The dive is really too much oil flow at the beginning of the stroke, not enough in the middle and at the end of the stroke. What we've historically done with these forks is to really understand where the oil flow is happening at what point in the bump and design a solution from there. So we have such a wide range of valving available for this bike that we're real, real comfortable saying that we can make this thing extremely plush and extremely firm with, without, I should say, a lot of extra parts that we really feel you don't need to, to put a solution together for this. We do recommend replacing the stock pistons with our pro valve pistons. We want as much flow through this fork as possible. It is, uh, it is at some points in the travel a problem, and uh, we found that our pro valve is a good solution to that. Once we made it up with changes in the mid valve, changes in the base valve, valving, and, uh, and more oil flow. The other thing that we found with WP suspension in general is that it has a sticky feel to it. You wouldn't really think that stiction plays this as big of a part in motorcycle suspension, but if you think about hitting the bumps with these forks, not only is the fork trying to travel up and down, it's also being bent with the impact of the front wheel. So we're a big fan about coatings here. We have used them extensively. We have raced with them. We've won a lot of championships. So I can honestly uh, say that it's really worth the money. Specifically, what we do is a Kashima coating to the top fork leg, which is aluminum. Essentially, what this does is it fills in the microscopic pores that aluminum leaves and leaves a very hard, very slippery surface that reduces stiction as your fork moves up and down in the travel. On the bottom of the fork, being a steel component, we use a diamond-like carbon. And this diamond-like carbon does the same exact thing. It reduces those stiction uh, properties. When you put these two together, you get an extremely smooth fork. When you made it up with all of our valving, this is really a world-class setup. We also do that to your damping rod tubes because you have a rod that moves on a bushing up in here and we've found that the coatings will actually help 
uh, with smoothness there as well. Um, I can tell you that I've looked around in the competitive marketplace and I'm seeing some things being built and designed and changed in here that honestly you really don't need. You really don't need them. Um, we're very, very cost competitive on our solution and we hope you check us out. So whatever you ride and wherever you ride, get out there and keep it pinned.